What's up guys, it's Mickey, and welcome back to Blank Canvas. This week, we'll be discussing cancel culture. And of course, since we're talking about cancel culture, I have to touch on the infamous Spitgate. Are you guys ready? And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you have to stay tuned to find out more. All right guys, buckle up, here we go. What's up guys, this week on Blink Canvas, we're discussing cancel culture. Now, I wanna pose a question to you. What does cancel culture mean to you? I've seen so many different definitions and no one can seem to agree on one simple definition of what it means. There are so many different ones on social media. It's now the term cancel culture is being politicized and we all know how well that works out for us when things are politicized, hence why we're still in the middle of a pandemic. So to me, cancel culture, I think, is when a person fully gives up on a person and or company slash entity. You just disagree with something that they said or they've done and it's like, it's a deal breaker for you. There is no going back. You do not want to support them. You do not believe in them anymore and what they stand for, and you don't want to associate with that. Do I think it can work? Um, sometimes, yes, it can hold the person or company accountable to make changes that need to be made, and you can bring something to their attention, like, hey, this is offensive, because everybody doesn't know. Like, what's offensive to you may not be offensive to the next person. It is our choice to pick up an offense. So you may be like, mm, no, I don't agree with this, and this is something I do not wish to associate myself with, which is your choice, and it's fine, but I think it's a thin line with cancel culture, because at what point do we stop being forgiving? At what point do we say this is so bad that this is unforgivable? And some things, I'm not going to lie, guys, I am not perfect, but there are some things that I'm like, for me, it's no coming back from. And this is worth being, quote unquote, canceling over. But I don't even know if canceling is the appropriate term to use because who am I to cancel somebody, number one, who I didn't create, Number two, who I didn't birth out, like, who am I to cancel anybody? Like, I'm a human. I'm going to make mistakes just like the next person. But there are some things that I'm like, I do not want to associate myself with. I do not know you. Please, who are you? <laughs> so I feel like it's an individual choice about things they can, quote unquote, cancel a person for. But I think we need a new term because, again, who am I to cancel anybody? Now, cancel culture has been around since the beginning of time. It's just come in multiple different forms. Um, but with the internet and social media, it is loud, it is strong, and it is like cancel culture on steroids. People can voice their opinions in mass amounts, and I think that has its pros and its cons. The pro is you get your point across. You may see, find some other people agree with you, and it brings light. To issues that a lot of people would have swept under the rug. For instance, like with the social justice movement that happened in 2020 because of George Floyd, people can just hide in their houses and say, no big deal. It was all over social media. We had nothing but time. Schools were shut down. The world was shut down. Work was shut down. We had nothing but time. But to see it and to consistently see that video over and over and over on social media, you had to acknowledge it in some way. Whether you wanted to do something about it or not, you had to acknowledge that that happened. And I think that is the power of social media. But think about when it comes to canceling a person, you get all of those opinions on a daily at rapid speed and it can be overwhelming and sometimes detrimental. So I do think there is a thin line that we all, including myself, have to be careful of when we're canceling a person or judging a person um, because they are human. Sometimes you just personally don't want to associate with their human or their company no more because you're like, I do not rock with you. I do not agree. Now, a lot of people think that it became mainstream from a misogynistic joke. Can you believe that? Surprise, surprise. So when the gangster Nino Brown in the movie New Jack City, I'm sure some of you have heard of it, 
and he was played by the actor Wesley Snipes. He said the infamous line, cancel that bitch, I'll buy another one. And since then, it's been in mainstream media. Um, Lil Wayne referenced it in his song, I'm Single. It's been used by people who should not be allowed to use it on reality TV shows. They are in no place to cancel anyone. And it's been used on social media just in the average person talking to another person, which is um, sometimes it can be funny. But it, again, guys, it's a thin line because who are you to cancel somebody? Who are you? Like if somebody's like, you know what? You're canceled. I The first thing that would come to my mind is you're not God. You, you, you can't cancel what you did not create. Only he has the power to do that. So as we already know that cancel culture is a very serious thing and to cancel a person may seem like no big deal, but if the point is to leave a lasting impact, I think somewhere deep down we all have to know that it's a big deal. And for something like this, it can have lasting impacts on a person's mental health. Some of the ways it can impact them is it can lead to shame, an increased sense of loneliness, which can lead to depression, anxiety, and higher suicide rates. And a very interesting fact is the brain registers shame in the same way as physical pain. And according to Brene Brown, a researcher at the University of Houston, shame is an intensely painful feeling or experience of believing that we are flawed and therefore unworthy of love and belonging. It's an emotion that affects all of us and profoundly shapes the way we interact with the world. And I can believe that because I remember one time seeing this research done where a person died from their heart being broken. They were so sad that it put so much strain on their heart that they actually died from a broken heart. And that kind of shook me when I first heard that. I was like, wow, it made me want to pay more attention to my mental health and the way that I treat other people. Do I get it right all the time? Absolutely not because I'm still human, but you'd be surprised by the way that we all interact with each other, how much impact we have, on each other. And the saying is, you never know what somebody's going through. And another thing that I try to remind myself and others when they ask me is, yes, you may be able to handle some things, but what you can handle, someone else may not be able to. It may be their breaking point, or maybe they just weren't accustomed to it. So I think we should all try to be a little kinder to each other. You know, I always say that, guys. And Is it effective? Again, I've said before that sometimes maybe you can make the person or the company be held accountable and they can make the changes that need to be made. But again, it's a thin line. It's a thin line with everything and everything in this world. It's all about balance. The good stuff need balance so you don't overindulge and the bad stuff definitely balance because too much of bad will just be literally more bad. And at what point, like I said earlier, is the person non-redeemable? And who are we to say that, you know what, you've done so much that you're just a shitty person and no one will ever see good in you. And oh, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard because honestly, I may not ever see good in you again, or I may not trust you, and I may not value anything that you ever say, but I think it's hard for me to say that everybody should write you off just because I wrote you off, which again goes back to it's an individual choice of whether you should su- whether you want to support the person and whether you want to, I guess, forgive them, even though everybody deserves forgiveness and it's easier said than done. But cancel culture is like a mass shame, like a mass shame effect that can just lead to detrimental consequences if we keep going down this path. Because where they will shame one person, they'll get comfortable and they'll do it to the next and the next and the next. And then what happens when one day, if it's you, you're going to want the grace, love and mercy that we're not willing to give other people And I just think we have to be very careful when it comes to cancel culture. Very careful. (music) 
Okay, guys, let's get to the good stuff. Let's get to what everybody pretty much stayed around for. The infamous spit gate. So if you've been on social media, unless you're living under a rock, you've seen it on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You have seen Pastor Michael Todd from Transformation Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma, trending for the infamous spit gate. And I just want to start off by saying that the clip was three minutes. His sermon was a little over two hours and people took what they saw in three minutes and they tried to be a distraction from his whole message that was again over two hours which i highly encourage everybody to go and watch and listen to and take notes because you actually may learn something i did i did even with the spit i learned something now i do want to give preference to that pastor mike is known for his visuals. He is in, one of his gifts from God is literally bringing the word to life and creating these excellent excellent visuals that help us understand the word better and see the word out loud. It's almost like watching a play or something sometimes because he's so good at creating visuals to get the point and the message across. Now, the controversy is he took spit and it wasn't just fake spit. It wasn't just only, it was like <sighs> kind of spit. And he rubbed it on his brother. That was his flesh and blood brother, ladies and gentlemen. He rubbed it on his brother's eyes to illustrate the point of the story. Now, some of you may know the story in the Bible about Jesus healing the blind man's eyes and making him be able to see by putting his spit on him. And the whole point of Jesus putting his spit on him was to emphasize the point of his DNA, giving him a part of him. Like it doesn't get any more a part of somebody than their spit and or their blood, but like spit. And that's what he did. He gave his brother his DNA to emphasize the point and drive it home. But people missed the whole entire point of the message. And I just want to emphasize that that wasn't Jesus' first time and it darn sure wasn't his last time spitting on somebody. So mm, I really don't understand why everybody was so upset. You can be disgusted by it. Like if you're disgusted by spit, I get that. But the the level of hate that Pastor Mike got was unnecessary. The mass hysteria of people saying that he wasn't a godly man, he can't lead a church, this and that was insane. It was literally insane. Like if spit makes you not believe in God, if spit makes you not believe in a man of God and a man of faith who's been leading us wholeheartedly since the beginning, then I don't think you were ever really rocking with TC Nation and Pastor Mike in general, because it shouldn't have been so easy for you to cancel him. It shouldn't have been so easy for you to judge him so hard. Like guys, it was spit. Um, cover your ears if children are in the car, but I've heard stories and seen people do nastier things with spit when it comes to sex than literally Pastor Mike putting spit on his brother's eyes to bring the word to life. And he even put out a video on IG where he apologized and said that maybe it was more of a distraction. To me, honestly, I don't even feel like you need to apologize. Like, what do you, what do you owe an apology for? Like, he proved his point. The level of mass hysteria that came. There was also another point that Pastor Mike made when he was preaching. And it was, Jesus took the blind man away from where he was. And it was because before he did the miracle, he needed to make sure no distractions were around. Because he even emphasized how it's fit. We'd be disgusted or we'd be like, you know what, God? I know I want to see, but I don't want to see this bad to where you got to spit on me. Or I do want to see that bad, but is there another way? I mean, you are Jesus for crying out loud. You can 
find another way to heal my eyes. You can touch me without the spit and I should be able to see. But again, it was going back to the emphasis of his spit was his DNA, you know, and people missed the whole entire point. And I would say I'm surprised that people missed the whole entire point, but I feel like people missed the point on purpose. Some people were just, I will give benefit of the doubt. Some people were highly disgusted and grossed out by the spit. I'll give you that. I was too. Like when he spit on him, I didn't think he was really going to do it. Like I thought he would just, you know, just to hawk it up, emphasize the point. He wasn't going to rub it. He rubbed it. Okay, cool. But there was still like an hour left of the sermon. And I feel like if you just got stuck, I just want to say that I'm sorry that you got stuck right there because you missed the whole point. You missed the whole point. This message was the first message that he preached this year. And that's usually to give us our word for the year. And this year we weren't just doing a word. We're starting something new. And it is, here is holy. That is the phrase that we're going for this year. Here is holy. And I don't think it was a coincidence that the year that he changed from a word to a phrase that the attacks come. I don't think it's a coincidence that as we've been giving back to communities and different churches and different organizations year after year and the numbers gotten larger and larger and larger, that he's been attacked to this mass volume because there are so many people when you give the way that TC gives and when you trust and be obedient and follow God in the same way that transformation does, there are people waiting on your downfall. Like even if you didn't do the same things that Pastor Mike and Transformation Church and Transformation Nation does, there are some people who will just literally want to see your downfall. And I'm pretty sure there are plenty of people who want to see Pastor Mike's downfall. And they saw an area in an open room. They said, let's pick at it. Let's pick at it. Let's pick at it. And there were so many gullible people who jumped on the bandwagon just to say, oh my God, I'm so disgusted with this bit. I I just missed the whole point of the word. Y'all would have missed a lot of stuff Jesus did. That's all I'm seeing is our generation would have missed so many miracles that Jesus wanted to do just because we were distracted by how it got done. Like who gives a crap? It's coming from Jesus. Get the miracle. And I know there are going to be people who say, well, he's not Jesus. Clearly, clearly he's not Jesus. But the whole point is, is he's a disciple of Jesus. Okay. He's living out, he's doing what God called him to do, and he's doing it to the best of his ability. He's human too. Whereas every there are people who got it, there are people who missed it, and there are people who are distracted by it, but he still had the humble posture, which I don't even think he owed the people who were disgusted that bad an apology, or chose to go out of their way to miss the whole entire point. I don't think he owed them an apology, but he had the humble posture to say, you know what? this bothered you guys, Um, this distracted you guys, I'm sorry, and, you know, let's do better, I'm still loving, I still love you guys, and I still pray for you guys, and that's why I still have a lot of growth to go, because honestly, I would have been like, fuck all of you, you know what the hell I meant, read the story, this actually happened, like, I'm not just throwing in gimmicks, just to throw in gimmicks, this actually happened, and, like follow along, but he was a good person and he was a good steward. And I'm pretty sure y'all don't really realize, which a lot of people aren't going to get from a three minute clip. He prays before he goes on. He's prayed over before he goes on and people pray for him day after day after day. I say all that just to say, be careful guys. We're all human. And I'm pretty sure we can all think of things to cancel each other over every other day, if not every single day, because we do not all think the same. We do not all look the same. We were not all raised the same. Our cultures are not all the same. And people will love you one day and hate you the other. What Pastor Mike, the thing that they praised him for, they shamed him for the very next chance that they got. When he was on a stage during our Anchored series, 
making it rain in a boat. It was on oh my God, you, you're such a great leader, a great man of faith. You do such an excellent job of bringing the word to life. I've never seen the Bible literally like this. Like it's a movie. It reminds me of like a play, you know, watching it being acted out live. He's that good. And it's the same thing that they shamed him for all over a little spit. But I just want you to know, Pastor Mike Todd, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, from Transformation Church, I am a part of TC Nation, and I can't wait to have you on the podcast one day. And you are great. You're a great leader. You're a great pastor. Keep leading us. Keep doing what you're doing. You are covered. You are surrounded by multiple different people and pastors who love you, who pray over you, and who know what you meant. Who know what you meant? Because I'm pretty sure you ran this across a couple of people and they probably were like, disgusting, but okay. It'll hit home. So keep doing what you're doing. Do not let all the noise distract you. Do not let all the noise tear you away from the path that God has called you to. You are still our leader. You are still the person who will teach us why this year the phrase is here is holy and you're still a man of faith. So just shut out the noise and bravo to you for having such a humble posture to be able to apologize because I'm not there yet, Pastor Mike. I'm not there yet, but that's why I show up every Sunday, (laughs) every Sunday. And I have to um, attend 21 days of fasting right now and do it through the Bible app because clearly I need it. All right, guys. So as we know, the whole point of this podcast is to grow as individuals, grow together, learn to understand each other a little better, love a little harder, and just hopefully find some different ways to relate to each other where we can see each other as human and as a person first and not necessarily what we did or what we said and learn to forgive each other and just be better human beings so this world can be a better place altogether and I'm human, and I am flawed, and I am going to mess up. And as we can see with the way I describe and talk about different things in each episode, there's still clearly a lot of growth that I have left to do. And in my opinion, my growth will never be done. I will never be done growing until God calls me home. And I think you're a better human being when you always have the posture of a student, because we can always learn something new and there's always room to grow and um we just all gotta stay humble like we gotta stay humble because otherwise god and life will humble us real quick and um life is hard enough i ain't really trying to be knocked down because i'm too arrogant or cocky so thanks guys for tuning in to this episode of blank canvas thank you guys for coming back week after week i truly appreciate it and I thank you guys so much for taking time out of your days to listen and I can't wait to see what we discuss next week that's all for now guys bye